Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Doing Good Things Driven by Data, organized by CIM Wales. If you're a university student attending today's webinar, you may want to sign up for the CIM Marketing Club newsletter. It'll keep you up to date with the latest trends, innovations, and concepts in the marketing industry. All you need to do is take a photograph of the QR code you see on the screen at the moment, and it will take you straight to the sign-up page on the CIM website. So now I'd like to hand you over to Lucy von Weber, Head of Marketing at Visit Wales, who is our guest speaker today. Over to you, Lucy. Well, thank you, Gavin. Diolch yn I'm prynhawn da, everybody. Good afternoon from Wales. And I've put a small picture up because I'm talking from about 20 minutes away from one of my favourite castles there. Uh, that's Carrie Kennan in Carmarthenshire, just to give you a flavour. So until I see you at the end when we're on the Q&A. Um, I'm going to cover a few things today. I'm obviously speaking from a Visit Wales perspective. We're, we're a large organisation. I guess you'd call us a large organisation. But the stages that we go well, that we've been through in the last 15 months and the three principles that I'm going to reiterate as we go through, I hope will be equally applicable to whatever size business you may be, um, small or large. Uh, I just wanted to also point out that everything that I show, the links will be on the slides. So if you download them, um, you should be easily able to follow through the PDF and uh, and get get through to all the links. And of course, if you follow us on social, a lot of the films that I'll be showing in an inset box rather than playing full on, will um, are available on our social and particularly our YouTube channel. So first of all, three stages. I'm going to cover pre-pandemic, during pandemic, and now um, over the course of the next sort of 25 minutes. And I'm going to talk about three underlying principles. And as marketeers, most of us will know these principles. But what we found in the last year is that they're nuanced slightly. So for example, knowing your customer, now means really knowing your customer, and I hope I'm going to il illustrate what I mean by that in the next 20 minutes. Competing for customers now more than ever means competing for experiences, and that's not just the promise of an experience, but it's it's promising a warm welcome, a safe welcome, and a reassuring um, all-round experience as well, and I'll demonstrate that too. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about an agile approach, and I'm going to talk about what I mean when I say it goes way, way beyond just a technology um, sort of use at the moment. So many of us will be familiar if you do web development work or any kind of digital planning sprints, Agile is an approach that's used in project management. So I'll come back to that. So first of all, um, I also want to just give a couple of slides on context because it's easy to forget when you're running around trying to react to things, which probably everyone has done if you're in a marketing position in the last 15 months, it's easy to forget your brand sometimes. and at the heart of everything we do, our brand values, those five below, are our kind of quality test for anything we might create, any sort of assets, any kind of messaging. And that fourth one, which I've just sort of highlighted there, uh, is do good things. That's one of our core brand values. And I think in the last 15 months, that's probably been more salient than, than all the others. But, you know, everything is, is very much in the forefront of our planning. Also context wise, we were quite lucky in some respects in January 2020, we had a new tourism strategy for Wales, welcome to Wales, and I guess links on all of these here. And um, it put us in a really firm position because a lot of our approach to the next five years is actually very much how we're conducting um, our marketing activity now. We've also got a recovery plan that will take us a bridge back basically to that strategic plan. I'm going to sum up the strategic plan. I'm not going to go into it at length, but it's very important, particularly that last aspect, because that's been such a core part of our activity in terms of the comms we put out over the last year. That this equal satisfaction of a visitor to Wales and also locals and residents. Um, and you can sum up the entire strategy by, you know, saying our, our aim is to grow tourism for the good of Wales. OK, so pre-pandemic, let's start pre-pandemic. And we were doing back in, you know, sort of August, September last year, we were planning a big spring campaign. We were looking at our competitors landscape, looking at the approaches, looking at our audiences. And I've tried to sort of sum them up here. So main strategic challenges, they are the cornerstones of our five year plan particularly spend, seasonality and spread, trying to spread the benefit across Wales, extend our, our sort of core holiday season and um, increase spend per head. 
our ongoing product focus wasn't going to change. Those are the three pillars of the Wales brand, landscape, culture and adventure. They are the three pillars that we believe we can deliver on and we have a strong competitive advantage for. So everything we do comes back to those three pillars, whether it's a social post or, um, or a big content piece. And our market focus, 90% plus of visitors to Wales are from the domestic marketplace, UK domestic. So huge proportion of our visitors are from England. Um, and what we wanted to do was try and grow that base. And we were talking about staycation long before this word, it's a horrible word, actually, I'm not keen on it, but it's being used vociferously by so many people now in the media. Um, new to Wales, but not new to the UK. So we have a small international visitor base. Our core markets are Germany, Ireland and the US. Um, but what we were going to try and do through 2020 was to take those that were already visiting the UK and try and entice them to extend the holiday or to come to Wales and the people of Wales. So uh, Pobble Cymru, as we'd say in Wales, very important. There was an additional focus on that super domestic sort of business and values over volume. And deliberately, there's an S on that because um, a lot of our marketing focus was around how we appeal to people's emotions. Um, sort of resonated with people who wanted to travel to Wales and be in Wales because of our brand um, and sort of country ethos of a friendly warm welcome and community and wider market trends obviously played in and we were looking at outdoor nature well-being wellness all strong trends that were coming in for 2020 with a lot of research on it launched a report report in world travel market back in 2019 and you can see that some of the, the creative that we were planning on using was very much about outdoors and, and sort of getting back to nature and enjoying um, coming off the treadmill a little bit in both senses of the word, work and also the gym. So that ended up with Wales Year of Outdoors 2020. We've been running themed years for several years now, and I, I confidently thought this would be our most successful yet. That picture there is probably my favourite of all the assets. It's a group of ladies called Blue Tits Chill Swimmers from Pembrokeshire, and they travelled up to Harlech and went chill swimming on the beach up there. But as you can see, big group, all standing closely together. You're going to see that what our TV ad is up in the top box there, so I'll just let that play. You'll have the link for it. But I just want to read this and pull out a few things. So the whole ethos of our concept was the door to Wales wide open. Um, you're part of our community, you're going to feel connected, you're going to discover new corners, you're going to eat, swim, dance and sing. And we were using the tagline, check in, check in to the real Wales. And you can see from that film and also from some of the stills I'm about to show you that there are very few elements of it that weren't pictures of people enjoying themselves in groups. Whether it's the, the top the top group having fun on a beach and having a big outdoor uh, outdoor meal, we had a really beautiful community pub down in Pembrokeshire, groups of ladies swimming, and all of that come March 2020, all of our media was pulled. There was no above the line activity, and we basically went black and went absolutely quiet on all our social channels. Um, resurrected end of March, beginning of April, and you may, if you follow us, you'll have seen the Visit Wales later message that we were using um, and continue to use as we moved into April. You know, and it's for someone, as you'll all appreciate, for someone who spends their career um, telling people or inspiring people to do something, tell them not to come to Wales was quite a, a quite a, a difficult pill to swallow at the time. But so we had we had good engagement with it. So let's move on to during. So shelved the campaign and obviously we were back to starting from scratch uh, in terms of our campaign plans we had to shelve all the assets and what we did um, we also lost a lot of our budget because we're part of government and quite rightly a large proportion of the Visit Wales budget went straight back into the core to help with business support and grant funding for many of the businesses so we looked within if you like use that expression we used our own experiences we used our own emotions and that's around experiences of restrictions, what we could and couldn't do and how that felt to us. Um, and we sort of asked ourselves about when we started doing above the line comms again, did it feel right? Does it feel right to do that now? And it didn't for quite some time when, when there was so much, um, you know, we were in such a dire situation and people were going through incredibly difficult times. It didn't feel right to be doing jazz hands marketing and, and uh, it, it just didn't feel right. What we did though, we triangulated the data. And if you're not familiar with that term, triangulation is basically just using more than one method. 
and, and looking at it all around the same topic as a way of assuring the validity of what you think. I'll come back to that and use some examples. So here's how we triangulated. We did a lot of consumer collaborative research and we worked really closely with our partners in the other visits, Scotland, England um, particularly, and we were running um, COVID consumer sentiment tracking throughout the year. We're on 33 at the moment. We've been doing them every two weeks since last April, May. And particularly that latter part of that second bullet point there, the reassurance that, that visitors who were looking to book were seeking from, from the sector. Um, what that allowed us to do, and we all love a bit of this because it helps us to create personas and who doesn't love a persona, we were able to sort of group them into categories. But um, in a way, a lot of these things were as much about what we could then um, communicate to our stakeholders and all the research we did was available to everybody at the same time as it was available to us. So it was quality assured and then it was published online. So what it meant is that businesses could also learn from it. Our, our organisations and stakeholders we work with, we were all sharing exactly the same data. We ran business barometers and as well as the quantitative data around forward bookings and employment levels and staff furloughed and all those, those quantitative elements, there was a lot of qualitative aspects to it as well. And I think that last one, uh, that last quote, direct quote, some people are describing it as a three winter scenario, winter, no summer, winter, you know, tourism, hospitality and events will probably hit hardest and first when the pandemic struck and has been one of the slowest to get back on its feet. Events, you know, we're all still going through pilot event testing and why the stakeholders. We've never had such close relationships um, with, I believe, our stakeholder partners and what I'm about to show you that we've developed, we couldn't have done without those stakeholder partners. So daily, weekly catch ups on things like what we're putting in messaging, also issues on the ground, concerns around irresponsible behaviour um, or particular worries from particular communities across the country. And also collaboratively with the other visits, um, the good to go industry benchmark was put in place, the industry standard. And that was there again as a tool to try and prove that a business had done as much as it could do to reassure a visitor and be safe and warm and give them a very um, assured welcome when they came back and a safe welcome. And we've implemented that. So I think along with Visit Scotland and England, you can search on our website and there's for businesses that have got that accreditation. And of course, the good old favourite, the, um, the, the data, our own data, which is the easy part of all of this, really. So we were tracking um, daily at one point, but usually weekly, what was happening on the web search. So I've taken a snapshot just to illustrate. This is the 5th to 11th of July last year, and we were just starting to come out of phased, phased return from lockdown. And there was, um, I think, outdoor attractions were beginning to open, the travel restrictions were lifting. So you can see on that page, you know, looking at the, the results that week, visiting Wales safely uh, was, I think it grew by 200% in the course of two weeks. Um, we were also looking at where they were coming from, and this was quite different from us because normally that top 10 is largely um, England based, but we were starting to see a lot of search from Cardiff, South East Wales in general. So again, helping us, helped us to define what we needed to do to alter some of our content and um, reframe it so it was equally applicable to people who knew Wales already. We obviously used Google Trends to look at sort of accommodation, interest, bookings, COVID-19, some of the, the, core, the core phrases that were being used, and our Inspire Me page, which I think was probably one of the most useful because it helped us work out where people were likely to go when they got here. And obviously there's a huge, more drill, uh, huge amount of drill down data beyond this. But what it did tell us is that people were looking at the outdoors and that enabled us to start planning ahead. So let's go down to that a little bit more detail. So it's the same week in our top 10 search queries, Snowdonia, Pembrokeshire, Temby. So Pembrokeshire and Temby, very, very um, coastal, obviously well known for its coast. Snowdonia, very well known for its mountain walking. So although we weren't doing a lot of above the line marketing ourselves, we found we, we thought it was our role to make sure that our stakeholder partners, national parks and, and people, organisations such as the RNLI, because there was this huge surge of people to the coast as soon as lockdown lifted. That was a really important part of our strategy. And also the feedback we had from those partners were helping again in that sort of triangulation process. And then ultimately, because, you know, we had all of that data and some of it 
by retrospective and reflective, I mean, sometimes it was a week or two old. You know, I think we're used to having data sometimes, particularly from wide, wide sort of larger scale consumer research that can take several weeks to come in. This was quick last year. But nevertheless, what we tended to do was go back to all of it and think, right, let's add public sentiment, what feels right at this particular time. And you know the way things were changing at that at that point. You know, daily there were different um, media stories. There were different um, examples of how visits were being made across the UK. And I've just taken that abstract. It's a genuine quote, but I think it sort of sums it up the feeling that we had. And this is from a particular lady who who was who was a little bit alarmed about visitors coming back and worried about how things would happen. Now that ended up in AVO and AVO was our response to trying to reassure communities and visitors that when they came to Wales, Wales was going to try and keep them safe and this was much as much about a promise to visitors as it was about visitors making a promise to Wales. Three basic tenets, care for each other, care for the epic land, care for our communities and AVO is um, the Welsh word for promise. So this came in initially as uh, lockdown was starting to ease and um, very you know, very well received but again couldn't have been developed without our stakeholders and by that I mean from small businesses to the national parks and colleagues and local authorities across the across the country. So along with Arvo came um, a toolkit, we do love a toolkit, I think in, in the industry we seem to love a toolkit. So the Visit Wales Safely toolkit was all about advice on you know how to speak to customers, how to reassure people, how to find out more around guidance and answer queries. It had lots of downloadable assets uh, like vignettes, video vignettes, um, and also posters, you know, right down to posters that they could print and display in their businesses. Now, that was pretty much our summer last year, and AVO was meant to be a six week campaign. Um, and we were going to, we, we had great plans for the autumn, fab new campaign coming in. Um, that obviously we had to shelve, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about now. So Avo is still with us, but nuanced content, nuanced message. And again, that's been done by triangulating all the data that's coming in and 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 taking sort of a, um, a water test of that public sentiment as well. Um, it's a cornerstone of all our comms still. We thought we'd have it six weeks. We've had it a year now and it's not going away anytime soon because it still feels right. And in fact, we've extended it to, as you'll see from some of those examples, to um, giving advice on, you know, or asking people politely not to like barbecues and the outdoors and, and various other elements. And this year we have had some of our budget back. We've been able to do a range of activity, including out of home. I've got a few figures up on the top there. I didn't want to statistic you here too much today, but um, the, the, the most important one to me probably is that last one on those bullets in the top right hand corner is the industry support and the way that the message has been consolidated. So whether you go to a, you're as likely to find AVO being displayed and that message being given in a tiny B&B as you are to a, a National Park Visitor Centre and, and that's been just so fulfilling this year really. It's been great as well because we're starting to return to a little bit of core content, um, what we call more our sort of stock in trade. But again, it's been a toe in the water to test public sentiment. So on the left there, we did a four day um, international festival, all virtual, obviously all online for St. David's Day. And I put a particular, there, there were so many films that were shared during that, but I've put that one in because I'd love you to look at that if you could afterwards. Um, because I think, again, coming back to our brand values, it sums up um, community, it sums up the real Wales, it's very authentic. And it was um, British Sign Language uh, partners who were signing to the Welsh National Anthem and Cardiff Castle grounds. And it's quite a, gives you a bit of a goosebump moment when you see it. It was, it, I think it was particularly good because it came out when Wales were, the, 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 um, the spring internationals were on, Wales were doing really well at that time in the rugby. So. It was a good it was a good thing for St David's Day and moving to the right this is something that we've created stacks of assets for the Euros this year don't want to talk about the fact that we had a sad day on Saturday and and Wales obviously went out but Wales as a country was so proud of the football of the football team and where they've got to and also proud of the way that they've done it and we've tried to execute that in again suite of assets that we brought out you'll see that little film playing yeah, Aaron Ramsey's in it, Gareth Bale is in it, but actually the core of that is showing Wales as a big open country, 
huge community spirit. So you'll see the kids playing football as you can there, people on the beach having a kickabout, all of that giving that kind of warm, warm welcome and setting us up for, um, for returning to sort of our autumn campaign, which we're planning at the moment. We're also starting to head back to some of our um, original, you know, perennial favourites on social. That, that puffin video is probably the most popular that we've ever had. And that came out first two years ago. And of course, we couldn't use it last year. But if we're ever needing a bit of engagement on our social channels, puffins usually do the trick for us. Um, we're also um, re returning to general, general posts, sharing a lot of others' information, but we're keeping the emotion very warm friendly, reassuring, and crucially, we're supporting partners. So just a quick, quick example at the top, you've got the Pembrokeshire Coast um, National Park. They, they've got their own Tread Lightly campaign at the moment, which we're supporting. And also RNLI, really important that with RNLI, we're, we're able to support the message that they're getting out to, um, to people. We've had a huge influx of people over the last year, and again this summer, who uh, were maybe not used to swimming in the sea, not used to the tides. So I, I like doing this kind of work because it really does show that the marketing that, that is undertaken is always informed by so many different parts of, of so many different aspects of data. Um, so we delve quite deeply into everything. And in fact, we're, we're in a bit of a partnership with the RNLI at the moment. We're running a big industry uh, webinar with them tomorrow so that they can talk about safety on the coast um, directly to businesses so that the businesses can get that out to their guests and visitors. So three underlying principles. I think, I hope I've demonstrated how really knowing your customer is so important. Competing for customers, again, you know, it, it's about making sure that as well as promising them the fastest zip line in the world, which we can do, it's also promising them that we're, we're going to give them a really warm, safe experience that's memorable when they're here. So the experience dimension has taken on a much sort of broader context than just the actual the actual experience of what they'll do when they get here as an attraction or when they check into accommodation. And let's just touch on this. So agile, agile approach. I and anyone who's used to dealing with web dev projects are used to doing things agile sprints. Agile project management is basically um, a well-established approach to, um, to technology development particularly. But in the last year, we've applied that agile approach basically to everything that we do. Um, we've had to pull things, we've had to change things. We haven't just had a plan B, we've had a plan C. And I don't see us at any point, at least for the next year, and probably not forever, as long as you know we're doing this at the moment, because going back to just having a plan A, you always need something in the bank. Now, as it happens, the plan, the plan A we had for last autumn and winter we still love a lot of the ideas we had then, and we're resurrecting those ready for this autumn and winter to be able to start using them. Um, but you know, if anyone's learned anything on our team from this year, it's been always have a plan B and be prepared to use it as the saying goes. And this is the other one, and I'm gonna finish on this one, um, and I've got one more slide after it just to kind of um, echo it really. It's public sentiment. However many reports we get in, however much consumer research we do, which may be dated by a week in some cases, even our web material, you have to take a call before you roll out a campaign on whether it feels right at that particular time, whether you're doing a good thing. And um, you know that's something that won't change now as well. That's our bench test really of, of, um, of whether we're doing the right kind of content and we're doing the right kind of activity. And I couldn't speak today, although we, were, we left the Euros as Wales on Saturday night, um, what the team did when they went onto the pitch kind of sums up that Cymru Wales brand spirit, doing good things, being authentically Welsh. They, obviously, nothing to do with us, but it just kind of evokes all the right feelings and emotions for, as far as I'm concerned. So if you didn't see it, um, as they went on to play against Denmark, uh, where they lost 4-0, um, sadly, on Saturday night, but as they went onto the pitch, um, Gareth Bale presented the team with a shirt for Christian Eriksen, who's obviously been very ill. And on the shirt, it says Brescia Wella, which is Welsh for get well soon. And that still gives me goosebumps. And I think it made a lot of people in Wales proud to see it. It summed up the way that they were approaching the tournament and beautifully kind of sums up the way that we, um, that we try and evoke the brand and everything that we do. And that's uh, growing tourism for the good of Wales. 
So I've come to the end of my um, of my section. I'm really happy to take questions um, for any remaining time, and I do love a Q&A. Well, that's great. Dielchavaur, Lucy. Thanks very much, Lucy, for a really great presentation. Uh, don't forget, there's still time to download the presentation slides from the handout section. And also, just a little reminder that if you're enjoying today's webinar and want to post on social media, you can use the hashtag CIM events. So now we're going to go into the short Q&A session. There's still time to submit your questions if you want to, uh, and we'll try and get through as many as we can in the next 15, 15 minutes or so. So the first one I have for you, Lucy, is how did you get stakeholder buy-in for the activity during the pandemic? Um, I think probably a num number of things made it easier for us to a degree. And the first of, first of which is, as part of government, we've also had a very, very close working relationship with industry across the board, public, private and third, throughout the last sort of 15 months, uh, because we've also been intensely involved with things like guidance and frequently asked questions and and being able to give advice, doing a lot of industry engagement. And so if I take Arvo as an example, Arvo, the Wales Promise came about as a direct result of those conversations with stakeholders. So rather than us creating something and then telling people we'd done it and hoping that they liked it, um, we, we, we built it up from the ground and made sure that they were involved with the development of it all the way through. And again, I think that's a philosophy that, that we won't lose after this. You know, it, it's proven its benefit. It's consolidated messaging and it's also helped us um, roll out when bearing in mind we had a very, very small budget last year. Um, we couldn't afford to do sort of whistles and bells, jazz hands marketing and saturate media. But what we could do well uh, with our partners is all share each other's material and consolidate messaging. So, yeah, that's that's probably my answer to that one. OK, thank you. And how can you apply what you did as a large organisation and the three principles you mentioned to smaller businesses? Um, I think you come back to those three principles. I, I worked freelance for about five years before I joined Visit Wales two years ago. And I would be using those now if I was still doing freelance work for a small hotel or for a retail business. You know, it, it comes back to um, knowing your customer so blooming and well. And to a degree, when you're in a smaller organization, that's easier to achieve because you have such closer contact with them. So we were very heavily reliant on businesses feeding back to us over the course of the last year. Um, and I think, you know, the other elements of experiences, if we've learned everything, anything over the last year, it's that the consumer data, all the anecdotal research, all of the, the media stuff that you read online, it's people wanting to return, have a warm, a warm welcome, a very familiar feeling, um, and, and to have a safe, a safe experience. And I think um, you know, those elements, again, if you're in a small business, by me, you know, things like a database are gold dust, aren't they, at the moment? You know, those are immediately the things that you can you can get direct to your customer. And the agile approach, yeah, okay, maybe as a tinier business you wouldn't use necessarily use agile as project management tool. But if you take it to its widest, the widest extent of it and use it as a process of reflecting and changing what you do the following week or the following month based on all of that feedback, then Agile works effectively for any, any size business. Thanks, okay. Gav. Right, thank you. We have a question here that says, what PR marketing agency are you working with and why did you choose them? We work, we have, um, as part of Visit Wales, obviously we have um, various agencies that we work with. Um, we, we tend to go out to contracts, I think our last tender was around 18 months ago. So each one differs dependent on what we're, what we're looking for. But once we're in contract, we work really closely with the agency. So um, yeah, it's all available online as well. And I can use that as a follow up. We've, we've got several that we work with at the moment. Okay. okay, thanks. Um, and has the interest, has the increase in interest in Wales, both the language rising, the TV dramas such as Keeping Faith and Hidden, based in the beautiful Wales, in beautiful Wales, it says, and sport, uh, all been good context that has made difference a difference oh, to Wales. marketing. Absolutely, and thank you for the beautiful Wales. Always like to hear that as visit Wales. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, 
um, one of the anyone who watches um, Discovery of Witches, which is a Sky Atlantic program, one of their biggest ever programs in recent years, Discovery of Witches, season one and season two, all filmed in Wales. And when season two came out at the end of January, people were binge watching season one. And our web figures always in the top three for about three weeks, locations for, for Discovery of Witches, then locations for Keeping Faith, also Sex Education, the big um, the big doc, uh, the big Netflix series, Sex Education, massive in places like South Korea. So when that airs, you suddenly see the, the web traffic reflecting it. So yeah, absolutely. You know, it, I couldn't, and sport, the same thing, you know, uh, showing showing that last slide with the Wales clip on it. It's, it just all reflects back on, on the nation brand, on the Cymru Wales brand, which is good for all of us, I think. Okay. Um, going back to uh, what you were talking about, uh, agile uh, methodology, uh, we have a question here um, who, who asked, which provider would you suggest uh, to use to learn the agile methodology? Uh, oh, yeah, you and I, those, there are different schools of thought out there. Yeah, no, I'm, and I'm, I'd probably pa pass that one back to CIM, actually, to be able to um, to suggest i mean agile as a principle is used by so many people now so um to, to pick one provider would be probably would be quite um misleading in a way so but i'm sure cim would have um documentation and, and links to things like that yeah <laughs> um next question is asking about uh, public sentiment so what if public sentiment is split down the middle how do you call it it's very difficult yeah it's very difficult and we were very we were very cautious um last year um we had to literally dip our foot <laughs> dip our toe in the water sometimes if you talk about things like promoting beaches and um and also mountainous areas where there was already a lot of interest in travel but equally there was also um you know obviously a concern about some of the remoter areas with a lot of people coming back in so it was super hard to call but i think Probably the easiest way to answer that is to say that if in doubt, we left it for a week and then we tested the water again. We we always brought public sentiment in. It's, you know, not that we had much money last year, but even if we had done and we are doing now, it always comes back now to what feels right at the time and being aware of the public feeling and, and the mood of the nation or the mood of the nations that are visiting you as well. So yeah, very hard to call, a really good question. Mm. Press pause is what we did. It's probably the easiest thing. Press pause and double triangulate and verify it again before we moved. Yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you for that. The next question is is very topical and it's talking about indoor events versus uh, outdoor events. And the question is, outdoor events would be attractive to many as they consider them less threatening health-wise as opposed to indoor events. The natural setting of Wales is ideal for this. So how will you develop this for the colder months of the year? Um, if we go back to really right back at the beginning of, um, of the presentation when I talked about our strategic plan, okay, and it's a good read, and I, I obviously would say that, but it is a good read. It's, it's, very, um, it's very simple, it's very succinct. It clearly shows what our priorities are, and our priority going into 2020 was very much to kind of let some of the peak periods take care of themselves and generate as much material and activity as we could to, to um, push into the shoulder season, autumn and winter. And of course, events as are, a, are a major proportion of, of that activity. So yeah, we've seen some really innovative ways of looking at it in different covered areas, all of those, those um, pieces of innovation coming back from industry. But, and when the time is right and it's ready, they'll have our support to be able to promote that kind of all year round all year round message to generate business throughout the year. Okay. Um, and which advertising medium do you think resonates with your audiences most right now? Ooh, we all play a different role really. Um, I think I'm, I'm bound to say social, I expect everyone will expect to say so, to, to see social, but what we've also done this year is, is extend quite a lot of our TV coverage because we're trying to also balance the message in Wales. You'll see a lot more in Wales, which we wouldn't have done previously. We would have done some in Wales TV advertising, but the majority would have been ex-Wales. Um, but 
in a way we're trying to play the two off against one another so they complement and they're reinforcing that message about a responsible return and a warm welcome and a safe visit and all of those other elements so this year i guess you know socials played a major role but things like our consumer database again being able to get messages out to people who are already loyal and, and wanting to come back that that's going to be the core again okay and what plans are uh, have you got in place for increasing spend by visitors we need to make sure that this, this kind of goes in hand a little bit with the shoulder season focus as well then there needs to be enough um product um promoted and available for people to spend their money on you know that's that's part of it and what we're trying to do as well and to reflect back in our original strategy is so that those visitors that come if they're coming for a day or they're coming for two days we'd love them to stay for a little bit longer um spend more locally you know part of the other promise was was very much based around buying local supporting local um independent shops restaurants all of that element but it's it's also down to us to make sure that we give those businesses and products profile uh, we, you know we've got to make it easier for someone to make that to make that decision and make that purchase um and someone here is asking about uh developing personas could you say a little bit more about uh developing a persona approach yeah so personas again it's a you know it's anyone working a lot in digital is probably really familiar with personas and in the way that web dev takes place and and your socials constructed but what we've done is apply that persona um, principle to, you know, when I talk about things like public sentiment and trying to test the water and see what feels right, we'll have a group of personas and we actually put names and people's faces to them so that everybody across the team is very clear on who we're, who we're looking at, who we're targeting. They're not just a statistic. We're not just saying this particular audience has, you know, X amount of potential to do this. What we're looking at is people that we could relate to. And um, so whether it's a family traveling with a dog and um, and a grandparent, you know, we'll start there and we'll try and work our way out of what they would be looking for, what kind of search phrases they'd want to use, what they'd expect to see in terms of the promotional or the, the general content we offer them. So personas are, I mean, have a Google of personas as well because it's a real, it's a rabbit hole because it's it's really fascinating. Go detail but quite honestly sometimes you know you strip it all back and you have a you have an image of someone in your mind that you're you're led by when you're when you're choosing your words your copy images and you're, you're looking at what their customer journey would likely be so uh yeah personas are a great a great i mean i'm sure cim has done something on personas so and if not it would be a fabulous one to do it's a good one okay thank you and here's a great question actually how will you keep the momentum going and encourage people to keep visiting wales when people yeah. can go abroad again i know and we're not complacent i mean you know last, last summer when we came out of a phased lockdown um in july we had businesses some businesses not all of the sector it was particularly self-catering glamping camping some businesses had a really really busy five or six weeks but those businesses in what should have been our year of outdoors they should have had a busy year not just five or six weeks and it's we're not complacent we know that when people came out of lockdown the weather was great everyone was desperate to get outside we know we've got stunning coast we've got great we've got great hill walking we've got fabulous scenery there was that desire to get out there but we're also equally conscious of planning for those element of people that probably wouldn't have chosen Wales in all honesty last year that came because it was it was what they could do what we're trying to do at the moment is try and get a proportion of them back we hope they loved it some of them probably didn't and may not come back but we hope the proportion that came tested Wales for the first time and loved it and you know had that feeling had that emotional connection and thought yeah that's the place I'll return to we want to we want to start really focusing on them and bringing them back but yeah it's a fantastic question and of course and I think every every UK destination is probably thinking the same thing at the moment you know we're, we're not complacent yeah and the next question really is, is on the back of that which is how do you deal with negative public sentiment do you use messages to address this yeah. or do you push messages to divert it well luckily in digital a lot of our over the last year a lot of our negative sentiment has been on social 
when it has come up it's been on social and we all know it's a it's quite a transient medium um so and also we kind of left last year when we did have one piece of negative sentiment we would let the community almost discuss it themselves and thankfully thank goodness um you know so let's take our facebook following we've got around one million on our facebook following if a when we were going out with the visit wales later messages there were some negativity there were there were some comments where you think oh yeah that's an unfortunate comment to put in there and but rather than take it down immediately we were waiting to see what happened with the rest of the community and as i say thankfully 95 percent of them were then coming back and saying oh actually no it, it is you, you will get a great welcome and it is a fantastic place and so we tried to let that kind of we, we didn't step into the fray last year with any of that and always at the back of my mind because businesses ask this throughout the year you would have one piece of negative sentiment that made the media i would always say to people let's look outside wales this is happening not just across the uk it's happening in the states it's happening in western europe it was an, an automatic and immediate reaction to a change in circumstance with having you know been very quiet for some time having people come back in but i think we've come i hope we've come full circle i mean tourism is such an important part of the economy in wales and many of our friends and family are all involved with it as well the supply chain and I, and i think you know it's you can't you can't get too involved and too obsessive about the negative you have to let some of it just roll for the time being and not be too reactive and what measurement tool then do you use uh, to measure sentiment across social? We do. Um, we obviously scan it ourselves. We do social sentiment analysis all the time. I mean, it, we're not a huge team. So in our social media team, there are three or four people. So as a group, you know, we're all looking at things as they come in. And I think probably more than ever last year, it was almost like operating in a small business because whenever we put something out, everybody in the team would be waiting to see what the reception how it landed what the reception was like and so again reliant on partners as well we've had tremendous feedback from destinations and from other partners across wales um so we monitor to make sure that there are no blips in what we're doing and what they're, they're hearing as well so we've been able you know it's probably can't tell you enough how important it's been over the last 12 months to consolidate messaging but also to substantiate what we're hearing by speaking to our, to our stakeholders daily, if not weekly. Yeah. So, so then what were the core problems uh, when it came to delivering activity over the last year uh, and how did you overcome those? I think the core, the core problems were probably principally, and it sounds very simplistic, but knowing the right time to do something, that became very difficult. And as I said, I think I mentioned when I was talking, if you're in a team where your whole your whole raison d'etre is to encourage people to visit Wales, to have to tell people that they can't visit and they have to visit later, went against the grain of everything we would normally do. So that that was difficult. And um, and, and also challenging budget circumstances. But, but over, over and above everything, it was knowing the right time and the right content to put out. And again, can't reiterate enough plan A, but have a plan B and C. We used our plans B and C more than we used our plan A's last year. And I can see that happening again for all sorts of other reasons. I just think it's a good way to, to plan, you know, always, always have a, a backup plan and always have different scenarios. Scenario planning is so important now. OK, thank you. And we have a question here that says, um, when when you looked at the campaign why did you settle on the word ador or promise rather than something like hiraith which is uh, for the non welsh speakers out there which is like a feeling or an emotion or a, a longing yeah. i thought that question was going to be why did you use a welsh word because but actually it's just why didn't you why did you use that particular welsh word yeah. um so i'm going to answer both those because i've asked myself that question now we used a welsh word because a part of our brand um the welsh language is an absolute you know it's a core of our brand values and about being able to express authenticity and and you know you'll you'll see what welsh use across all of the things that we do um we chose Ado because it was it, it does what it says it was a promise and what we were trying to introduce at the time everyone said oh you need a charter you need a visitor charter or you need a, a you know a visitor um a visitor promise and we thought well let's just play with it slightly and we will have a visitor promise but to make it unique to wales it it will be called Ardo, and it's our promise that's brilliant 
<laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Some some really great questions. There's there some fab questions. Us. Thank you. Yeah. So that's all we've got uh, time for in the webinar today. I'd like to say thanks to Lucy for today's presentation and CIM Wales for organising the event. We do hope that you found it interesting and worthwhile. Our next webinar express, How to Have the Energy, is Wednesday the 14th of July at one o'clock, hosted by CIM Greater London. You'll find further details listed on the events page on the CIM website, where you'll also be able to register for the session. So on behalf of CIM, Thank you once again, Lucy, for a really great presentation, and thank you for joining us. We hope that you will enjoy the rest of your day. Hoil Vaur, goodbye. <laughs>